Hi students, hope everyone is fine and safe. It gives me immense pleasure to welcome you all to my new video. And today's video is about another interesting topic in unit 4. We are going to see hardwired control of processor. So before going to this topic, you want to understand what is meant by hardwired control of the processor. Right, so far in unit 4, we are seeing how the processor works, right? That is, how the fundamental concepts of the processor, right? How the content is transferred from one register to the other register, how the instruction execution is taking place. That is what we are seeing in unit 4, right? And today, we are going to see about hardwired control, right? So, we know that all the complete operation, that is, the, the instruction is executed inside the processor, right? That is, it is executed, first it is fetched from the memory, and then that particular instruction is executed in the processor, right? And we know that processor is the central processing unit, correct? Right? And we often say that processor is the one which controls all the operations inside the computer, right? That is, it provides control signals, correct? That is what we are saying, right? It, it provides control signals for each and every operations, right? So, and we are already seen about the multibus organization, single bus organization. You would have seen instruction decoder and it provides a control signals for all the operations takes place, right? So, today we are going to see how the processor is generating that control signal for each and every operation, right? How is that the control signal is getting generated, right? There are a lot of techniques to generate the control signals inside the processor, right? And the very important techniques is there is two important technique. One is hardwired control and microprogrammed control, right? So before seeing the difference between hardwired control and microprogrammed control, you ought to understand what is hardwired control and what is microprogrammed control, right? Now, so far you, you understood that Hardwired control and microprogram control is nothing but a technique which is used to generate the control signals right in the proper sequence, correct? Right. Only with the control signals, the operations will take place inside the processor, correct? So, hardwired control in the sense, right, by using the circuits, the, the combination elements, it will generate the control signal, right? That is called hardwired control, right? Very simple, right? By using circuit trees that is by using uh, different combination elements it generates the control signal and microprogram control is from the name itself you can understand generating control signal based upon the programs okay based upon some instruction some microprograms machine level programs okay that is called the microprogram control right so now what is the difference between hardwired control and microprogram control right so hardwired control Basically, as I said, it generates control signal based upon the inputs it is getting from different different elements, right? And by using appropriate circuits, it will generate the control signal, right? And it is uh, designed as a finite state machine, right? And it is very fast. That is, in hardwired control, the processor will, will work in a very fast manner, but it is very inflexible because... Once it is designed, we cannot able to change it because it is hardwired control, right? And it is applicable for simpler machines, okay? That is RISC machines, right? That is reduced instruction set computers, right? And microprogram control, as I said, it generates control signals based upon programs, microprograms, which is generated, which is inside, which is fed inside the, inside the processor, right? That is with zeros and ones. Okay, and it is flexible. That is, since it is a program, we can able to reprogram it, right? But it is very slow, right? And also, it is applicable for complex machines. That is, for complex instruction set computers, right? So this is the basic difference between hardwired control and microprogram control. Okay, in this video, we are going to see only about hardwired control. How the control signals inside the processor is getting generated through hardwired control. Right, right. So, if you take hardwired control, we will just see this basic circuit. Okay, this is the basic, basic elements of the processor. Right, so this is hardwired control. Right, you can see, like, you have instruction register, you have control step counter, right, and the input of the control step counter is a clock, right, 
and it has external inputs and as well as conditional codes, right? And there is something called fixed logic circuit, right? As I said, it generates control signal based upon these circuits, correct? Right, this fixed logic circuit, will, it will have both encoder and decoder. It will have encoder and decoder. Have encoder and decoder. Encoder and decoder, okay? And you got to understand one particular thing here. Right, what is first, what, first, what is meant by control signals, okay? That is, right, I'll just show here. Control step counter, the input is clock signal, okay? Right. And now, you got to understand what is control signals first, okay? What is control signals? We got to come across different instructions, correct? Right, last video we have seen, Executing a complete instruction set, right? Executing a complete instruction set and uh, as well as executing a branching instruction, right? You would have come across all these terminologies that is PC in, PC in, PC out, right? Z10, right? All these are control signal. That is, it will generate a control signal PC in, Z in, like that, right? How it will generate the control signal? based upon the contents of, that is the inputs of, from instruction register, conditional codes, external inputs and step counter, control step counter, right. So based upon the contents received from instruction register, step counter, external inputs and conditional codes, it generates the control signal. And using this control signals, the other operations will take place, right. And as I said, this fixed logic circuit is nothing but it has both encoder and as well as a decoder, right? And what is step counter, right? The step counter, it is incremented. It is incremented using clock cycle. For every clock cycle, the step counter increases. That is, it will, it will go for the next instructions, right? The, the counter will go for the next one, okay? Now, you want to understand, this is a very basic circuit, okay? And in this circuit, you have uh, encoder and decoder combined here. That is fixed logic circuit. Okay, we can we can see a detailed view. That is by using encoder and decoder as separate elements. Right? You can see here. Right. So it, this is a diagram where you have encoder separately and decoder separately. Correct. Right? And you have instruction register, external inputs, conditional codes, and control step counter. Okay. Right. And as I said, the control signals. You can see here. This is run is a control signal. And end is a control signal. Okay. Right. And and you want to explain this particular diagram. Right. This hard wired control, when you have encoder and decoder separately, you have something called step decoder. Right. Which will generate, you know that program is a list of instructions. Correct. It, will, it is a list of instructions. Right. Like move, add and all those things you will have. Right. Right. So here, for every instruction, right, for every instruction, that is the control sequence, for every instructions, right, the step encoder will generate a separate line, that is, a separate line will be given for each and every instruction, right, and similarly, whenever there is an instruction is fetched to the IR, right, IR gets the uh, new instruction, or uh, add R1, R2, something like that, any new instruction, okay, it will also generate a separate line, you can see here, these are the lines that the output lines of instruction decoder right and these lines you can see here these lines right for any particular instruction one of these lines will be enabled only one of these lines will be enabled right for each and every instruction there will be a separate lines right and based upon all this information so that is instruction decoder step decoder and external inputs conditional codes right it will generate the control signals Correct? This is how the control signal is getting generated. Right? You got to understand with a very basic example. Okay? Right. So, right now, you just look at this particular instruction. Okay? So, this instruction is, we have already seen this instruction in the last video. Right? That is addition of, that is add R3. Add R3. And R1, add R3, R1, and this is the instruction uh, we have seen, right? In last video, if you have not watched how to execute 
uh, the program using a process. So that is a, a complete instruction how it is executing is, is explained separately in that video, right? You can go to that video. I have explained the same example in that particular video, right? So we have already seen this, right? So this is the instructions, right? This is the instructions and each and every step will take one clock cycle, right? Right, and here we will we will call this as control steps. Okay, this is one control step. 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 Okay, and as I said, the counter it will increment one by one. I said right? for every clock cycle, right? So for every clock cycle, the counter goes to the next one, next one like this. Okay, right. And now we all understand, right? In this particular instruction, we know that the first three, right? The first three is called as Fetching phase, right? This for fetching an instruction from PC to IR, PC to IR, these steps is followed. First three steps is followed. So that is fetching phase. And the next four steps, that is where this operation will take place. Add R3 and R1, save it in R1, right? We have already explained this, correct? Right? Now you got to understand, right? What is control signal? You can see here PC out, MR in, right? Z10, all these are control signals. Okay, you can see here, based upon all these inputs, the control signal scale will be generated. This control signal will be PC in, right, PC out, or MAR in, MAR out, so that the corresponding operation will take place. You clear? Clear with the hardware control, right? And you want to understand the other control signals as well. There are other control signals, that is the N signal, right? N is a control signal. Right, which is used when, when there is an end command, end instruction is reached, what it will do is it will reset the counter. You can see here, it is connected to the counter, right? And the counter will be reset, right? It will reset the counter so that it will start fetching the next instruction, okay? So, in order to fetch the new instruction, right, the end command, end command executes that, that particular instruction is completed and it will reset the counter and it will start fetching the next instruction. Okay, and similarly, what is run command, right? Run, run control signal. Once again, run control signal, right? You can see that run control signal is sent to the control step counter. You can see here it is connected to control step counter, right? So whenever the run command is set to one, whenever run command is set to one, right? It will increment the step counter to the next next instruction, right? That is, it will increment the step counter for every clock cycle when r run is equal to 1 right and when r u n run is equal to 0 right the counter will stop no increment operation will take place the counter will stop right why it is stopping when it is used right it will be used whenever you are using wait for mfc signal right we already seen what is mfc signal okay right whenever if it waits for mfc signal what will happen, right, no operation will take place until or unless that particular MFC signal is reached, right, and at that time, this run command, run control signal will be is equal to zero, right, right, this is how the control signal is generated and the operation takes place in hardware control, right, now, you have to understand how this control signal is getting generated, we know that, uh, we have said that based upon these inputs, the control signal is generated, right? And I said these are the control signal, PC out, right? And MR in, Z in are the control signals, correct? Right? And now you will see how this particular control signal is generated. You can see here for this particular example, Z10, right? It's just a combination of elements, right? So Z10 can be generated by this particular equation, right? That is T1 plus t6 dot add plus t, t4 dot br which means this control signal is at 10 will be asserted at first time slot of all the instruction right at the first time slot of all the instruction right and and at the time slot 6 along with the add instruction along with the add instruction and at time slot 4 along with the branch instruction. Like that it goes on, right? By using this combination, like this instruction, right? By using this combination of elements, this control signal can be generated. You can see here, T in and then T4 and branch instruction and T6 and as well as add instruction. All these control elements will generate a control signal Z10, right? So this is what I said based upon the inputs of IR, 
right? And as well as the external inputs and as well as conditional codes, it will generate the control signal, right? Similarly, I'll give you another example, right? You can see the end signal, right? The end signal, you can see this is the sequence, it generates the end signal, right? At time slot 7, right, along with the add instruction and at time slot 5, along with branch instruction, right? And similarly, at time slot 5 and time slot 4, along with the branch instruction, right? That is unconditional branching. Okay, and that can be represented. This equation can be represented like this, right? And this is the this is the circuitry for the generating end control signal, right? As I said, end control signal will reset the counter, right? And it will start fetching the next instruction, right? That is the termination of that particular instruction. Okay, so this is how the control signal will be generated using hardwired control, right? And I already said. The end signal, what it will do, it will fetch the cycle, the next is new instruction cycle by resetting the counter, right? And the run cycle, what it will do, it will count up every time, it will increment the counter, right? And if it is set to zero, what will happen? It will hold the clock pulse, right? It will not increment the counter, right? So this is mainly used when whenever we wait for WM of a signal, right? I have already explained all these things, right? And now you'll see how a complete processor will look, right? So these are the basic elements of a complete processor, right? You can see it has an instruction unit, right? And it has the instruction unit, what it will do, it will fetch the instruction, right? It will fetch the instruction either from the instruction cache, right? And if that instruction is not there, it will contact the main memory, right? And that is why we say that in, in processor, there will be always a caching memory, a temporary register in order to fetch the instruction, in order to execute the operation very fast, right? So, if there is, if the instruction is not in caching memory, it will go to the main memory, right? And it will also have a separate unit for integer, integer and as well as for floating point to, to handle integer data and as well as floating data separately, right? And there is a data cache right which is used separately right there are processor which has instruction cache and data cache separately and there are processor which will have a single cache for instruction and data cache right this processor is connected to system bus right through bus interface right and the performance of the processor right to execute concurrent operation can be achieved by using uh, these elements, right, by using more than one of these elements, right. These elements need not be one, right, it can be having more than one as well, right. So, there can be more than one of these elements to, to perform concurrent operation, which will improve the performance of the processor, right. So, today what we have seen is we have seen what is hardwired control, right. It is just, we have seen how a control signal is generated using hardwired control technique, right? It's all about the combination of all the inputs and the control circuitry to generate the control signals, right? So, hope you understand the logic of hardwired control, right? Thank you, students. Thank you, students. Thank you for watching. Kandipa in the video, you will be useful. Subscribe, passionate professor, and keep learning. Thank you very much.